So as you build a leadership team and there's more layers of team members and there's more growth, you know, you you really shift in your own schedule over time where more and more of your time is investing in and building leaders and not doing the tactical things. Um, but this is a really big tension for small business owners, especially if they're the founder or if they're the one that creates the product or if they're the top salesperson. What advice do you give to somebody about um, not becoming that bottleneck so that they are free to actually invest in their leaders? Yeah, I think it goes back to what we talked about earlier a little bit where you are stubbornly committed to the vision that you have and the principles and the standards. But tactically, how people choose to skin that cat, as long as they're aligned on those things and they get the results that you say are mandatory in the way the guardrails and the principles that you've told them to do it, they can get creative a little bit within that. And I think we all need a little bit of autonomy as humans. And that'll start to free you up because where I really want our business owners to live is in the visioneering and the strategy, partnering with their leaders on the strategy. I want their leaders to be focused on taking that strategy into creating a plan with the team and holding the team accountable for execution. So at Ramsey, we have a, a leadership development program. So we've we've got about three hundred people now that are in leadership. It's wild. We it's, when I started, we had three hundred people as a whole company. Oh, it's bananas. <laughs> That's so crazy. So you're on our leadership development committee, and I know a lot of small businesses aren't going to have a leadership development committee. Um, but the point is, there's a lot of intention. Uh, there's a lot of focus that we put on making sure that our leaders know how to represent our values, that they understand our strategy, they know what the vision is, and that there's a lot of alignment at the top. Because the bigger you get and the more leaders you have, uh, one inch off in leadership is a thousand miles off in the trenches. You know, And so that it just becomes more and more critical the more leaders that there are. And so I'd love for you to say a little bit about, so we, we now have 100, 200, 300, 400. Um, these are different tiers of leadership. And we got to a point where we realized we can't effectively train our newer leaders in the same meeting that we're training our more seasoned leaders. You know, we, we need to all have alignment and collaboration in some context, but we also need to customize some of the, the feedback and the coaching that we're doing based on really their tenure in leadership or the maturity That's would right. be another way to look That's at exactly it. That's exactly right. So how within your team or how within leadership development committee, um, how do you tackle that? You know, and what's important when you're looking at, uh, maybe you would call it the stages of leadership. I think it's really important to meet people where they're at in the journey and to not assume, as we were talking about earlier, that things are obvious or that they already know them. Mm -hmm. So with that 100 level group, we are really laying out the basic foundational pieces of leadership. 101 of communication, 101 of conflict. And then as you are going up the chart of leadership and you're getting into the associate directors, the directors, the senior directors, depending on, you know, 200, 300, 400, then we're really getting deeper and pushing in more specifically on those topics. So at the most, you know, when we have a someone in one of the lower levels of leadership who has to have a hard conversation, right now they're usually not having that conversation by themselves. So what is it important for them to know? And then what is it that the, that leader who joins them to be able to have that, that upper leader that joins them, what do they have to know mm -hmm. in that conversation? Um, so we just kind of intensify the level of information that we give people. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, th I think it's kind of funny how like a hard conversation for your very first hard conversation, exactly. you know, five years later, it's like, pfft, that's just... Right. One o'clock on a Thursday. Exactly. Like it doesn't it feel doesn't like it's all consuming. What would thing. keep you up at night for your first hard conversation would not even, you wouldn't even think twice about it. You could just roll right into it after you've had 80 of those. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of about giving people, again, back to those reps, it's giving them exposure to a 20 pound weight or a challenge where they're at. One of the things you, the wording you used for it a couple of years ago is dosaging. What's the right dosage? Because if, if you are a 100 or 200 level leader, and I flood you with all the information at once, you're only going to absorb a certain percentage of that. It's going to feel overwhelming. Your confidence is going to be low. You're not going to walk out of there having mastered that level. But if I can dosage it out and give you the right level for where you're at, then later on I can come back around and build on that, and you feel very confident, and you can tackle that next thing, and it's not overwhelming. Hmm. 
So I know a lot of small business owners, they may be hearing this going, man, this sounds great and I'm not doing any of it. I mean, we're just running the shop and I've got leaders and I want them to think more like owners. But Sarah, we not only do we not have a committee or a monthly meeting, I don't even have one-on-ones with my team. It's just as we go, we're just talking and you know flying through this stuff all the time. Practically, where do I start? What can I do next week? And then maybe in the months following that are just going to be steps towards getting all of this stuff in place. One of the things that is easy just in real time is you can tell them something you learn in real time. I mean, I don't know about you, but I make stupid mistakes every day. An hour late for me. <laughs> <laughs> so taking one of those and going, hey, I want to continue to pour into you just in real time, walking over and going, hey, I really see a lot of potential in you. And I know you've told me you want to grow. I want to start, if it's okay with you, telling you some of this stuff as I'm learning it. So I just had this conversation and I asked this person to do something, and I didn't give them near enough instruction. So I just kind of want to share with you that as you're working with your coworkers or your team or whatever, make sure you're really thinking about what's all the information that they need or what's a good majority of the information they need to be able to do their job. So just little things like that where you're – and I still do that. We'll have a staff meeting or leadership meeting and afterwards, I'll snag somebody and I'll go, hey, I want to mention something to you that was on my mind. And just in real time, I'll just tell them like, or here's something. I was at this event the other day. Or I read this book and something kind of caught me. And I just felt like I'd like to share yeah. it with you because I feel like you're going to hit this situation at some point. And I'll just in real time tell them the thing. So real time doesn't have to have a lot of structure. Say I wanted to start adding some structure. Mm-hmm. Um, is it is it a weekly one-on-one? Is that the best place to do that? Is it yes. a leadership so meeting? So if you have nothing right now and if you have five leaders, what I would start with is I would have a once a week or every other week group discussion. And I would pick one topic or one video or one podcast and I would play it and talk about it. And it doesn't have to be long. You could take 30 minutes for this. If you only have one or two leaders, I would start a regular one-on-one. And the most important thing is the consistency. So if you can only fit it into your schedule every other week, that's okay. But make sure you do it. And in that, take 30 minutes, take part of it to see how they're doing, and take part of it to talk about, hey, here's where I see you growing. Is that where you want to grow to? Okay, here's one thing that I think we're going to need to work on. Are you okay with me giving you feedback so that you know, in a couple of months from now, you are killer at this skill. You know, it occurs to me when you say pick a video or a podcast, uh, people might think, okay, where do I find those? And, <laughs> you know, I'm just such a growth junkie. And I, I think this goes back to one of those, like, just can't help but do it. I, I've always done it this way. Every training that I've done, everything I've taught my leaders, I stole it from somewhere. You know, and I don't necessarily even know where it all came from. Um, but if you're not growing yourself, if you're not listening to podcasts and watching videos, which of course the irony is we're on a podcast, so <laughs> they're at least listening to this one. So good on you. But as leaders, we have to be consuming content and and growing ourselves in order to, you know, to pour it into our team. It's like if we don't fill up our own cup, we don't have something to pour into them. That's right. So say more about the importance of. Uh, doing that over time, and then maybe some things that you do personally to find fresh content and keep your own leadership sauce sharp. Well, I would assume that most people listening to this podcast are not content staying at status quo. I'm guessing that we all want to grow towards something. And the reality is the, the leader that your business needs you to be in a year from now, three years from now, five years from now, is not the person you are today. Today, you don't have those skills. And so if you're not out there growing yourself, I mean, we talk about this, right? You're the lid on your business. Maxwell talks about this. You are the limiting factor. And so what I have learned over time, I have three young kids. Um, I'm a working mom. My husband works full-time also. And so the way I learn is different than the way you learn. You might love reading books. I am so slammed. I just don't have a lot of time to sit down and read a book. My kids are constantly, you know, coming up and needing something and uh, or wanting to play a really competitive game of Uno. So (laughs) I find that like listening to a podcast on a drive Mm -hmm. or sitting down and grabbing lunch with somebody else who's really good at a skill that I need to learn, you have to find your own way of learning those skills. Your, Your way of learning, it is okay if it's not the same as someone else. Some of the things that I might recommend if you're looking for a really easy book 
for example. I love Lencioni's books. They are really good fables, easy to read, and then he breaks it down in the back. They're very short. Um, if you have a little more time, obviously there's some additional books through our blogs that you can find, um, really meaty by topic. Mm. I would say go with a learning path that you most connect with. Obviously, I'm biased because I love our podcasts and I also love our Entree Leadership books. So to me, that would be the, you know, <laughs> the, the number ultimate. one thing. Well, but. I really like that because it's just reading books is not the only answer, but it's it's getting things into your pathway. Um, even just as simple as on Instagram, go right. in and follow a hashtag yes. leadership, hashtag team, hashtag right. unity. And in your feed, stuff's going to show up that's going to prompt you. It's not going to be a training in a box, that's right? right? But you just need that spark. You need it. Maybe it's a little meme or a quote, and you go, oh, that's that's a principle I could talk to the team about today and have a little five-minute huddle. But I need that constant inflow of those sparks to keep my brain engaged with like, yeah, okay, I need to— And it gets you out of the tactical thing that you're doing and into more of a strategic business, visioneering mm-hmm. What's the future? And that is only you can do that for your business. So if you're not doing that, you're litting your business. Yeah. 